In BRV, we're at 8101 East 40th Avenue in Denver. Our phone number is 303-322-6013. We're going to walk around the Model 30D today. Let's take a look at the outside here. The first compartment we come to is the generator. It all operates from inside. You don't need to do anything out here. Just be aware that's the exhaust for the generator. So if you do have kids around, that does get hot. This is the storage area. It also has your cord in it. So this is a cord for the campground. When you get to the campground, they're going to have an outlet, a 30 amp outlet. You're going to plug this into the campground. Then there's going to be a breaker at the campground where this plugs in. Make sure that breaker's on as well. When you leave the campground, you unplug and you put this cord right back into this compartment. One thing to be aware of on this compartment is there is a box up front, which is the controls for this slide. So you just want to make sure you're not throwing anything heavy or sharp or against that box. As we move back along, this will be your propane tank. That's going to be full when you leave. And if you need to fill that for any reason, it's not a self-serve thing. They fill it for you. So campgrounds, truck stops, U-Hauls, any place that has the propane, they can fill that for you. This is a little outside shower. Rinse off anything that you need before you get back in the coach. This is going to be the cable. So this is a hookup for cable TV if you're going to have cable at the campground that you're at. Regular unleaded fuel in this unit. This is for your dump. So back here in the bumper, you're going to find your dump hose and it's just stored here. So you're going to pull that hose out, bring it up here, take this cap off, hook the hose up, put the hose down into the drain. This is your black tank, that's your toilet. So pull that black tank first. Let it completely drain. When it's done, pull this gray tank. That's the soapy water from the sinks and showers, so that will kind of rinse out that hose for you. When you're all done, take your hose off, put the cap back on, put your hose back here in the bumper, and put the cap on the bumper. Make sure you get that on nice and tight. This is a city water connection for leaving your hose hooked to water. So if you're gonna hook your hose up at the campground and just leave it hooked up, you're gonna hook up to this. If you're gonna fill your onboard water, then you're gonna do that here. So you just hose just goes in, fills it up. There's an overflow underneath or it'll come back out when it's full. There's also the gauge inside that'll tell you when that's full. This compartment will have blocks for leveling. So what we include We include these blocks that are three steps. So you're going to lay this down under the tire wherever it's low. If the back is low, the side, the front, wherever you're low, you just lay these, these blocks under the tire, drive up on the block to get level. There's a level in the dash. We'll show you that when we get inside. You're going to have some camp chairs. We include four camp chairs. We include a water hose. This is a RV hose. It's lined so it won't taste like hose for potable water. Cable for cable TV and gloves. We include some gloves for dumping if you'd like to use those. On the back of the coach we do have a ladder just for our use. We're going to get up there and check the roof every time it comes back. Um, it's only for emergencies. If you need to get up there for an emergency, be careful. It's very slippery when it's wet and it's not a patio. On this side of the coach, this unit does have a storage compartment here as well as here. So two storage compartments on the back. Another storage compartment here. All these storage compartments have a key that opens all of those. We have two more storage compartments up front on this, on each side of the door. These compartments are pretty handy for things like muddy shoes, getting in and out of the door, or any other storage you might need. There's outside speakers on this unit. 
does have an awning. That awning is sit, sit here in the patio, so if you're under the awning enjoying it, that's fine. If you're gonna leave the coach, do not leave that awning out. Put the awning in anytime you're not sitting under it and enjoying it. And um, right inside is the awning switch we'll show you as we get in. If you're plugged into electricity or have the generator on, you've got a couple of outlets here, plug in any appliances that you might wanna use. Let's go inside and check this one out. This is the inside of the Model 30D. It's got a heated mirror. This button here is just for heated mirrors for winter use. And then obviously this is to adjust the left and right mirror as you're driving. This has a tow haul feature on the end of the um, gear shift. So as you're going up the mountains at about 40 to 45 miles an hour, this will start to slow down and it'll shift down. Once it shifts down, just push this tow haul button in and a little tow haul light will come on on the dash. Leave that on going up the hill and especially leave it on coming back down the hill. As you're coming down, if it's still going a little faster than you want because you don't want to have to brake coming down the hill, then you just tap the brakes twice and it'll shift down for you so that you don't have to brake coming down the hill. You want to just let the engine and the transmission do that for you. There's a couple of outlets here to charge phones. These are all run off of your car battery. You have a car battery to start it, and you have two house batteries. We upgrade everything to dual house batteries for you. And those will run everything in the back, except your microwave, your air conditioner, and your outlets. We'll get to that when we get back to the generator. There's a level here for you, so you wanna make sure as you park that you're pretty level. You want this bubble to be touching that black circle in the middle. Your refrigerator's fluids have to be able to circulate. You need to be relatively level for that. If you're parking somewhere where you think you need the emergency brake, park somewhere else. We discourage the use of the emergency brake on these. Um, your backup camera is going to be on anytime you put it in reverse. It's built into the radio here. You can also go into the radio by pushing the home button and just turning that camera on manually and just see what's behind you. So anytime you wanna do that. Everything else up here is pretty standard. You've got your air conditioner. If you're renting in the summer and that dash air or in the winter and the dash heat isn't sufficient, you can turn that generator on to run the air conditioner. You do not need the generator for the furnace, just air conditioner, microwave, and outlets. Up above, we've got a bed. So this piece will flip over into this hole to make a bed and this ladder will come down here for access up and down from the bed. TV will swing out uh, up in this compartment. You got the DVD and remotes for the TV. Up on the side where the cable's connected, there's a tiny little button. You wanna have that button pushed in and have a green light on for broadcast TV. Have that button out for cable or for DVD. Uh, otherwise, everything there will run. You'll have to go into the um, menu for the TV, tell it what your source is or your input, depending on what how it's labeled, and then have it search for channels so that it knows what it has in, in your area. There's a couple of curtains that pull across here for privacy. When you use those, just kind of hold them up as you slide them. This is a plastic rail, so you don't want to pull down too hard on that. There's a privacy curtain here too that goes around the cab area, blocks that off at night for privacy. In this cabinet, we have a lighter for you, a fly swatter, and a deck of our custom cards in here for you. We also have a manual that we've created specifically for this unit. Everything in this unit is covered. Any questions you have will be in here if you ever need to reference that while you're out. All these curtains work the same. You're just gonna pull down in the middle and uh, back up. Just try to pull in the middle instead of the ends. We're gonna slide this out and show you how this works. We'll come back up and show you the two beds as we get back to the control panel and give us a little more room in the living room here. So we'll go skip to the middle to the control panel here. This is the control panel and this does control everything in the unit. We'll start by extending that slide out. So if you just hit extend and hold that extend down while the slide goes all the way out, 
when you push this button down to extend it, you want to make sure that up by the driver's seat, it's not wedged against that slide or anything's fallen in behind the slide that would tear off that trim. Once it's to the wall like that, you want to just let go of the button. So we'll come back up now that we have a little more room that we've run the slide out and show you. This can convert to a bed. This is called a dream dinette, so you don't have any leg in the way. Everything runs up and down on the wall. There's a little handle under the table. You just turn that handle and then you're able to push this all the way down. So it's going to come all the way down to this rail and then these four cushions just lay flat to be a bed. Once you're ready to put it back up in the morning, you just move the cushions, pull this back up, latch the latch, and you're ready for breakfast. This is also a sleeping area. With this sofa, you're just going to lift the bottom and you're going to pull this toward you. You're going to pick this up, push it back in. Simple as that to make another sleeping surface. We upgrade pretty much everything in these coaches. We have stainless steel sinks and upgraded faucets. We have a microwave and an oven. With the stove in these, all you have to do is turn this burner on and hit the spark and these will light for you. If you're going to use the oven, you have to take this, put it on pilot, hold the pilot in, and while you're holding in the pilot, you're going to reach back in and light it. It's about two-thirds of the way back and it's just a little finger sticking down. Hold this in and light it. It takes a long time. You think it's not working. It's not working. It finally works and lights. It's a small light, a small little flame. It's not going to poof at you. And then hold it about 30 more seconds. Then you can turn it up to the temperature that you want and go ahead and use the oven. Microwave, just like home. You have to have electricity for the microwave and the air conditioner. It shouldn't run them at the same time. If there's lights on this microwave, that's how you know that you have, <clears throat> excuse me, that you have electricity and everything's working. So when you plug into the campground, if you don't have lights here, then out where you plugged in, you'll probably need to throw that breaker. The fridge is right here. It's going to be um, an all automatic fridge. It'll switch between electricity and propane. So um, if this orange light's on, it's working on propane. If that orange light is flashing, you just need to turn it off and back on auto and it'll relight itself. You probably won't see it, but it's a good thing to get in the habit of looking for so that it's not off for hours before you realize and turn it back on. If you plug into electricity or run off the generator, that orange light's going to go off and you'll only have a green light. There's an adjustment for cold here. Freezer on top, fridge on the bottom, all runs automatic and those work great. Back to finish the control panel now. At the top of the control panel is your generator. So you're just going to hold down this start button until it starts and then just let go of the button, give it a 30 seconds to a minute to kick in and you'll have electricity. Anytime you want to run your air conditioner, your microwave, or your outlets, you'll need power if you're not plugged into a campground. If you're plugged in, then you don't need the generator. This is all your gauges. You just push the button and they'll light up for propane, battery, fresh water, and black water. On the battery gauge, we don't encourage relying on that because in a deep cycle battery, it's going to be good, 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 bad. So. Um, just know that if you're dry camping or you're not having any services, not plugged into electricity, you're not driving during the day, you're not running the generator, that you'll need to either do one of those things, most likely run the generator if you're dry camping, so you can keep those batteries charged. Um, and so that's only if you're dry camping somewhere without electricity for, you know, a day or days at a time and we can go over that if that's the case when you're going out we'll explain that to you a little more. The fresh water, the black water, and the gray water they will all light up to tell you what the values are in those tanks. If you dump your black tank and it doesn't go back to just empty it's because things just hang up on those sensors. There is a bucket that we include in the bathroom with some cleaning supplies. You could fill that bucket with water, dump it down the toilet when you're hooked up to the drain and see if that will help wash those sensors off. But just be aware of that. It's no big deal. You know you just dumped it and it's just not showing empty because things do hang up on those sensors once in a while. You have slide. This slide is up front. This slide's in the back. 
to push this rear slide out, you're just gonna hit extend. And this is the back. So we're sliding out the whole back of the RV. Your bunk beds and your wardrobe in the back are all gonna slide. And once again, you wanna hold this down until they get all the way out. You wanna have the slide either all the way in or all the way out. Once it gets out, you can just let go of the button. And now you've got a walk around queen bed and all kinds of room with your bunk beds here. We'll finish up this um, control panel. These are tank heaters for winter use. If you're plugged into electricity at a campground and it's cold, freezing, or just below, then we'll turn these on. So if you're going out in the winter, we can explain that. But you're only going to use these if you're plugged in at a campground. You don't want to use them if you're not plugged in because they'll drain your batteries. Water pump. Anytime you're going to use onboard water, you want to have the water pump on. If you're hooked up with pressurized water for the hose, you won't need the water pump. Your water heater has two options. We have a 110 volt option, so if you're plugged in electricity, you can use that 110 to, to heat your water. If you're not plugged into electricity or have your generator on, then you're going to use the propane option and turn that, that switch on to heat your water. This is your thermostat for both heating and cooling. So you're gonna take this switch over to the left for cool, over to the right for heat, and then just set the temperature to your desired level. We recommend leaving this switch on auto high. Anytime that that furnace or air conditioner comes on, then the fan will just automatically come on with it. There's a light switch here. With your bunk beds, we've upgraded these so that now you have another dining area because in this coach it accommodates more people, but you just had the one table for four, so now you have another table back here. This top bunk does have latches on both sides. You want to make sure that latch is in before you lift this up so it won't scrape up the wall. But this will just flip up and latch out of your way. We don't recommend driving with that up. That latch is not 100%. So make sure that you put this down before you drive. Don't have this up with people sitting here while you're driving. This table will come off of the leg. That leg comes out of the floor and just lays here. So this table also lays flat here. And these four cushions make your second bed. And that gives you the two bunks. You've got lights and you've got windows in each one. This has another TV back here with its own remote. Uh, in behind. You've got the whole bedroom. You've got another TV here, full wardrobe. This is all upgraded to be a pillow top mattress. And again, you have lights overhead and light switches so that anything back here. You have a, an emergency window. If you cannot get out the front for some reason, you can get out the back. Just open those latches, the window swings out, and you can get out the back. The bathroom's here in the middle. It's an all-in-one bathroom, they call it, because you have your shower, toilet, sink, everything in the one room. So on the toilet, you're just going to push this pedal to flush the toilet. Part way down, we'll fill it with water. All the way down, we'll flush it. There's a shower. We include a trash can, a bucket with some cleaning supplies. And then there's a shower head. has an on and an off. So you can get wet, turn it off, soap up, turn it on, and save water if you're boondocking and trying to save water while you're camping. Under the counter here, we're going to have toilet paper and chemical. So there's a bag with little pouches. Anytime you dump that black tank, after you're done dumping the black tank for the toilet, come in, take one of those pouches, put it down the toilet, and flush it down with a little bit of water. That will make it smell better and, and help it break down a little quicker. There's RV and marine paper in here for you. If you need more on your trip, try to get the RV and marine paper. You can get it at campgrounds or Walmarts um, and probably other places as well. But you don't want to use like a heavy home quilted northern type of thing because it'll get into a ball in your tank and then it doesn't uh, dump and drain properly. So you want to make sure that you um, use that right paper. This is our Model 30D with our bunks and thanks for visiting.